Holy hell, guys. I went to a rummage sale today, and I came back with an enormous bag full of stuff. So basically what I got here is I got eight tapes and 21 CDs. And I'm gonna show them to you. And there is not a lick of metal in here besides a really bad pun I can make here in a minute, but I'm not going to. Um, so if you're not in any way interested in, you know, like uh, some like classic psychedelic stuff, some uh, mostly country, like literally mostly country, and uh, stuff like the blues and stuff like that, this is not the video for you and I would suggest exiting out of it currently but if you want to stick around see some stuff it's cool with me um so i'll start with the tapes first one is thick as a brick by jeff Bertal. Uh, i sold off most of my not metal tapes but i kept a couple of bands you know i kept a lot of the country i kept like zeppelins and stuff like that but uh i kept like jeff Bertal as well and uh, i'm a big fan of this album this is probably not my favorite Jeff Rattel album. I would probably say that uh, Bakwalong is, which is very generic, or uh, Stand Up, probably Stand Up, actually. But yeah, that's Thick as a Brick, if you don't know them. It's just a progressive rock band from the UK that features a lot of flute. Next is the rest of the tapes. Somebody must have, like, donated their Pink Floyd collection, because all of this is Pink Floyd. And this first one might be my favorite Pink Floyd album. This is metal. This right here is what I was referencing with the bad pun when I said not a lick of metal. Never mind. Um, yeah, this is Pink Floyd's album, Metal. Uh, if you've watched Live in Pompeii, this is uh, the song Echoes right here. It is all of side two, and it is a progressive masterpiece. If uh, you like Pink Floyd, you already know what I'm talking about, but if not, seriously, go watch that Live in Pompeii video. This is unbelievable. This is such a good album. Um, by the way, I'm not in my room because it's like a disaster area right now. I uh, had to move my shelf and a bunch of stuff fell out of it, which sucked. So I basically I've been working on reorganizing my room. Next is uh, The Dark Side of the Moon. Everybody knows this album. You know, there's nothing too crazy to show you here. Just the clear tape. Yeah, everybody knows this album. I don't need to talk too much about it. Next is Wish You Were Here with the alternate cover. Um, I much prefer the original cover. If you know Wish You Were Here, I'm sure you do. You know, the song Have a Cigar is on there, and obviously Wish You Were Here. This is a great album. Next is another awesome Pink Floyd record. This is Pulses. Um, I don't have side one, or I don't have the first two, which sucks. This is a live release, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this is just a side D and C, I think. Yeah, side three and four, that sucks. I'll have to keep an eye out for the other side for the other one, but uh, yeah, it's a two tape set, which is pretty titties. Next is The Division Bell by Pink Floyd. Very very happy to have these. This is badass looking. Hang on, let me take this whole thing out for you. First off, it's enormous. This is a highly praised Pink Floyd album, just like most of their stuff. Big one, very nice, and plus, this must have been like breakthrough at this time. What year is this? Oh, 94. Probably not very breakthrough, but uh, you know, definitely not normal to have a transparent blue tape. So that's super cool. I'm really glad that I have this. Uh, this will probably spark my interest in Pink Floyd once again, having all of these. I used to be a heavy Pink Floyd listener, and now I'm not so much anymore, but uh, yeah. Next is the final cut. Don't know anything about this. I think this might be the final studio effort by Pink Floyd. Clear tape. Don't know, so I'm not going to talk about it. And last is The Wall by Pink Floyd. Everybody knows this one. I really can't stand most of this album. It, um, I 
current state of mind because I've over listened to it. So that's it for the tapes. And last is this fat stack of mostly country CDs. Um, so I have a mildly organized. So uh, yeah, the first one I got here is Stardust by Willie Nelson. Uh, I was I actually fixing to spend like fourteen dollars on this online. Um, it's a great album. Willie Nelson is my all-time favorite country artist. I'm sure that you know this if you've ever heard Willie Nelson. Georgia on my mind's on here. You know stuff like that. Moonlight in Vermont. It's a great album. Blue Skies. Next is, a, I don't know if I have this or not, but I picked it up anyway. This is Always On My Mind by Willie Nelson. Everybody knows the title track, I'm sure. But if you don't, listen to the song Last Thing I Needed First Thing This Morning. Awesome song. Next is something I'm not too happy to be getting, like, hits, greatest hits. But with the Gold Country guys, most of the time you can't find the CDs of their full lengths. So this is 16 Big Hits by Willie Nelson. It's just got a bunch of cool stuff, you know, like Blue Eyes Crying in the Rain, Blue Skies, you know. City of New Orleans. Uh, again, the last thing I needed first thing this morning. Stuff like that. Uh, it's got uh, him playing Midnight Rider by the Almond Brothers, which is very cool. Next is a, a technically not the greatest hits, but it's huge. It's 20... 20... Uh, 20 tracks long. I actually was listening to this on my drive home today. Uh, I'm, I have this cassette, but I love Willie, and I'm always going to love Willie, so there it is. Next is Hank Williams Jr. with the album Rowdy. Um, he's actually been popping up quite a bit on my radar recently, Hank Williams Jr., uh, with a lot of the songs that I've been buying, or with a lot of the CDs that I've been buying. You know, it's got a Dixie on my mind down here, Ramblin' Man by the Almond Brothers, Are You Sure Hank Done It This Way? You know, stuff like that. Uh, I don't know too many of these besides Texas Woman and Tennessee River is also also a great album. Yeah, uh, and next is something I'm really glad to get. Uh, this is Hank and Hank, you know. This is uh, in the 80s when Hank would do, like, uh, duets with his dad, you know, in the uh, studio recordings even though his dad was long dead which is badass i'm really glad that i have this um yeah i've been wanting to pick these up and it's really cool to hear them saying uh there's a tear in my beer together and stuff really really cool glad to have that next is the essential waylon jennings um waylon kicks ass don't need to even say anything about it um you know it's waylon Next, Merle Haggard, Brandon Mann. Uh, Merle is somebody that's really eluded me in the outlaw country area for quite a while. Um, I actually don't know any of, the, any of these besides Working Man Blues because a bunch of people have played that. So yeah, uh, if you know Merle Haggard, the Merle Haggard album. Another Merle one. Today I started loving you again. Um, another one that I'm not familiar with. I don't know any of these actually, which is cool because now I got some new stuff to listen to. And here's an album by Merle, the last Merle album that I knew most of these already. You know, I mean, Okie from Muskoki, Mama Tried, The Grateful Dead played Mama Tried. Uh, again, Working Man Blues again. Can't get over no Merle. Next is a. Uh, the final studio release from Conway Twitty. This is Final Touches, which is odd that he named it that. I don't know if he knew that he was dying or not. I'm not too keen on the Conway Twitty history, but uh, he's awesome. I'm a big, big fan of Conway Twitty. Um, I actually became a fan of him through Family Guy. You know, they do those pan offs, you know, like they don't know what to say, and then Peter just says, Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Conway Twitty. And <laughs> that's actually what got me into it. They played uh, that song, Hello Darling. And I, I kept getting that stuck in my head. So I started picking up Conway albums. And I, they started staying in my head. And here's another Conway album. Then the opening track is Hello Darling. <laughs> um, 
I'm pretty sure they've also played You've Never Been This Far Before on the... The... On Family Guy, oh my god. Another Greatest Hits, you know. I'm trying to avoid Greatest Hits, but when it comes to country, it's basically the only option. Next is something I got off of my mom's uh, recommendation, because she knows my taste in country, and she knows it's a very particular. Uh, this is Gene Audrey's Greatest Hits. Uh, classic guy, apparently, you know. He played You Are My Sunshine, which is the only song that I don't, that I actually know on here. Oh, never mind. He sings that song, uh, Ghost Riders in the Sky. This is cool. I'm glad I got that, and I get to get to know it. Now here's another one, Back in the Saddle Again, by Gene Audrey. Another thing, he plays a uh, Blue Yodel Number no. Five, which is a Jimmy Rogers thing. If you know Jimmy Rogers, if you're back in the twenties, he uh, was a um, train conductor turned country artist, and then he uh, got really big, and he's extremely influential to all kinds of country music, rock, blues, everything. Because basically everything he did was based in the blues. So this is Gene Audrey. Next is uh, something I picked up. Just again, another recommendation from my mom. This is Dolly Parton, Loretta Lynn, and Tammy Wynette, The Honky Tonk Angels. Um, you know, it's got that song, It Wasn't God Who Made Honky Tonk Angels. As a answer to that song, Honky Tonk Angels. I completely forgot who wrote that. Wow. I don't remember who it was. But, uh. Yeah, Love Sick Blues by Hank Williams is on here, you know, I got a feeling all the blues, I, I can't yodel, so, <laughs> but yeah, that's cool too, and uh, I don't know if this band's country or not, so this could be the departure, but if not, it's not, this is um, the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, my mom also recommended me this one, and uh, I'm gonna give it a shot, I see banjos, I see some s solid mustaches, that's probably gonna be a good thing. Next is uh, something that my bro my uh, friend has a huge rager for, so I picked it up. This is Meatloaf, Bad Out of Hell, too. Um, it's Meatloaf. I don't need <laughs> to introduce much about Meatloaf, so I figured I'd give it a shot. Next is uh, basically the only reason I bought this is like a nostalgia thing. Something my fan uh, I used to like when I was like eight. This is the Jonas Brothers. Uh, lines, Vines, and Trying Times. Um, I just remember that I used to like the song World War Three a lot when I was a kid, and Hey Baby. I don't know, I was a big fan of this when I was young. I actually have all of their albums with that one. So, <laughs> yeah. Next is something that's super cool for me to have. Uh, I finally picked up some Otis Redding. The Dock of the Bay. Um, Otis Redding is obviously a super influential uh, blues player. A little bit of R&B in there, but mostly blues, you know. Um, you know, the Allman Brothers played several of his songs, uh, like Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out, which is on here, which is very cool. And, uh, yeah, I'm very glad that I get to basically study on some uh, Otis Redding from 1968. Last is The King, obviously. Elvis by the Presleys. This is his family singing his songs, which is pretty damn cool. I mean, obviously, they'll probably do duets like Hank did with Hank. Two disc set, and it's a. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be super cool. I'm really glad. And uh, disc two is like bonus versions of the songs that were previously unreleased, which is very cool. And the last one is the first Elvis album. This is Elvis Presley's Elvis Presley. And. It's not every day that you see the real albums on CDs, you know, like, uh, Blue Suede Shoes, One Sided Love Affair, Trying to Get to You, Blue Moon, Money Honey, Heartbreak Hotel, stuff like that, My Baby Left Me, I Want You, I Need You, I Love You, if you know Elvis, you know Elvis. So that's it, guys, that's everything. I hope you enjoyed sitting through a not metal video, which has not very recently been done. So, uh, yeah, I'm about running out of time, so keep it greasy, guys. I'll catch you pretty soon.